What's up everyone? All right, so in today's episode, I'm gonna talk about missing a great trade. I'm gonna share with you some tips that hopefully will help you as you deal with this in your career because if you're a trader, aspiring, intermediate, or advanced experienced trader, this happens. It will happen to you. It happens to me all the time. But I'm gonna share with you a little bit of a fork in the road moment that I saw today. And this could be the difference between being able to maintain a position of strength and momentum in your own trading or fall victim to emotions and start to spiral. So let me share this with you. Just today, for instance, and I'll set the stage, give you a little context. So for the last two, three weeks, the market has been garbage. There hasn't been a lot of good action. It's been very, very slow. So now there's different ways you can trade through slow periods. I made a conscientious choice to scale back my share size and to pretty much put myself on the sidelines. I was like, said to myself, I said, listen, buddy, <laughs> you look great. I always look in the mirror when I'm talking to myself. I, say, I give myself a little pep talk, give myself a little comment. I say, hey, you look great. That beard today is phenomenal. It's on point. Now, since we're here, uh, let's get real for a second. The market sucks. In the past, we all know, we, you and I both know, that you tend to trade way too aggressively in a terrible market. You dig yourself a pretty big hole. Let's try something different this time. The market was starting to get cold a couple weeks ago. I said, you know what? I'm gonna step back, I'm gonna slow down. Instead of trading B quality, C quality setups, I'm just gonna say trade the best and, and literally leave the rest. And as a result, I didn't trade very much in the last two and a half weeks. But I also didn't dig myself a deep hole like I might have in the past or like I probably would have if I had traded pretty aggressively. So the long and short of it is that coming into today, I was feeling kind of like blah. You know, I was not really expecting to take very many trades. I didn't really think I was going to see any A quality opportunities. But what ended up happening was we had a stock that squeezed up a little bit, consolidates right around VWAP. And... I sort of was like, all right, this is going to be another one that fades. You know, I saw it pop up and I thought, no, this one's going to fade. It's, I have no, no expectation for it. In fact, I think it's probably a short. But as I'm watching it, it's not dropping. And I'm thinking, boy, that this thing's holding up. It's kind of weird. And then I thought, if this thing breaks, this pivot, the, the high of that little move, I think it's going to go. And so... As I see it starting to break, I try to press the buy button and I'm a little too slow. Mm. All right, it goes up 25 cents a share without me. So now I'm like, okay, boy, this, ah, oh, shoot. All right, well, now do I really want to chase it? I don't know, maybe I should. Uh, goes a little higher and it pulls back just for a second. And right there, I punched it on a micro pullback. I said, you know what, let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm buying it here. Granted, I was buying it like 45 cents higher than my initial attempt, but you know, buy high, sell high, the setup was okay, I jump in there. It ends up going a little bit higher and I knew I had kind of chased it a bit, so I got out pretty quickly, booked the profit, and then I didn't get back in. Now, it ended up giving a couple of more uh, pretty clean opportunities and I didn't trade them. I was like, oh gosh, I don't know. I didn't make enough on my first trade to give myself a big cushion. So, you know, I, I just didn't feel like I could afford to lose it. And I, I saw a trader say, you know what, guys? I sold way too soon. I'm getting FOMO. I'm, I'm kind of, like, frustrated here. I think I'm going to call it a day. This is a trader in the chat room. He's got his million-dollar badge. So, I you know, I, I pay attention to what he says, and I'm thinking, all right, you know, this is someone that... He knows what he's talking about. He's, he's pro he, I think he's got the right idea. And, and right in that moment, I realized as I saw another stock pop up, I saw someone else type in, jumping in it. And I said, that's a trader who missed this one opportunity today. And now they're playing the game of chasing everything that moves. They're trying to kind of overcompensate for the fact that they missed the first one. And, you know, the first one ended up consolidating sideways. You know, we had this big move up from like $8 to $17 a share. 
And then it pulls back, and you know, while it's pulling back, the MACD crosses over, and it's kind of choppy, and it does make a second attempt at the high. And I was like, no, you know, I, I didn't make as much as I should have on the front side of the move. I'm not gonna go back and trade it now. And that was the right move, because it did one of these pops, and then whoop, flush, halting down. And I was like, that's exactly right. And that's the type of trade where even on that same stock, I could have overcompensated out of frustration for not fully capitalizing on the first move. You know, I kind of missed a couple of good trades. I got one in there, maybe two, but it, you know, it's just, it is what it is. And, and so for me today, I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back and say, I am really glad that I was able to show some restraint and that I didn't jump back into it. That I just said, you know what, I got green on it and maybe I could have pushed it a little harder, but the fact is I sort of missed the first entry. Uh, and I got a little something out of it, but I didn't get such a big cushion that I could afford to start taking some risk. I really, you know, I didn't. So the right move here is to take the gain off the table, to be grateful for it, and to come back tomorrow. But this is what a lot of traders will do, and this is what I've seen other traders do just time and time again. They miss that first trade. Now, the stock is up 100%, 115%. They buy, you know, this kind of secondary pattern. It's not as strong as the first one. Pops up a little bit and then it flushes. And they're the person who's red on a stock that's up over 100%. And not only has it been cold for the last two, three weeks, finally we get something that moves and they manage to lose money on it. I can relate to this because I have been in this exact same place before. I know exactly what this feels like. I have done that. And I could have easily done it today. I'm, I, you know, I, I restrained myself. I pulled myself back from that temptation, but it could have easily happened today. And you know, I, today I saw a couple other stocks pop up and I was like, all right, feels like we're having a little bit of a sort of boost of, you know, momentum today, but I, I just I kept saying, you know, you don't have enough of a cushion on a day, I don't think, to take the risk. You know, this is a, an important psychology of trading, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit uh, more in my class tomorrow. So I'm going to teach a, a class on YouTube tomorrow at 11 a.m. on scaling. Scaling in and scaling out. So you could bookmark that if you want. You, you might see it as a, an upcoming video. But in any case, I'll be live at 11 a.m. for that class. So the thing here is that as a beginner trader, a beginner trader, you're typically gonna to wanna to focus on keeping it really simple with one entry, one exit. Get in, get green, get out. You don't wanna overstay your welcome, you don't wanna push it. Right now as a beginner, you're just trying to build some consistency. You know very well that most people who trade lose money. You know that my results aren't typical and you're just trying to get in the mindset of just capturing little slivers of profit. Are you maximizing opportunity? No, absolutely not. Right now, that's okay. You're not efficient, but you're just trying to get green each day and be consistent. That means you focus on A quality setups, trade the best, and then anything else you, you really should just leave alone. Now, the next kind of evolution of that, you know, is starting to increase share size a little bit more. And rather than just selling as soon as you have, you know, 10 or 15 cents of profit, you hold until you see an exit indicator. Uh, and then the next evolution is scaling in, uh, adding, adding, and then scaling out, selling, selling, to try to keep a little piece as long as you can. You know, and, that, and that's all great. But the fact is, when you start doing that, you're sacrificing that initial base hit. You know, when you, instead of uh, sell the whole thing at 15 cents, you hold it for a bigger move, you are risking losing that unrealized profit. You know, we've all seen stocks flush down and all of a sudden, you know, that unrealized gain is gone. And so that's the risk that comes with trying to push it a little harder. You risk giving back, you know, the unrealized gain. And so on a day like today, you know, I got my, my, my sort of one trade, you know, I got my 20 cents a share or whatever it was, but I didn't get 40, 50, 60 cents a share. I didn't get a dollar a share. I didn't get such a big move that I felt like, wow, I've hit my daily goal and I have this much extra. 
Because when you hit your daily goal and then you have that much extra, you can use that extra as your risk for the rest of the trading day. You say, listen, I already hit my daily goal and I'm up an extra X amount. So now on my next trade, I'm gonna risk X amount. And if I lose it, like who cares? It's, I still am walking away my daily goal. And that's when you're really in the driver's seat. That's when you can start to really step up to the plate. But sometimes, you know, if it just so happens that you miss that, you know, really good trade, that first trade, and that might have been the best trade, then anything beyond that feels like chasing, and you don't really have the profit cushion to take the risk. And so the right move in those circumstances, the right move is to protect your consistency and to just say, all right, I gotta lock it up. I'm gonna be green. I'll try again tomorrow. I'll try to do better tomorrow. And the, the wrong move, the mistake, is to just start to spiral. You know, to just start trading, 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 chasing the good trade that you missed. Because while there might be some days that you end up finishing better for it, you know, you make more, what's gonna happen, certainly a few times, and maybe even more than what, you know, the opposite, is that you'll end up giving back a ton. And then you end up finishing your day red, maybe deep red. And that's where you're like, wow, I feel really silly here. I had a, um, you know, I had a really solid <laughs> base hit day, which would have been great. And look at me, it's gone. You know, pissed it away, being too aggressive, late in the morning on not the best setups. Because I'm upset that I missed the good one. So that's your fork in the road. You miss a good trade, now you have a choice. You either start, you know, flailing, grasping for straws, just trying to catch the next one because you're frustrated and you're overcompensating, or you have the presence of mind to say, you know what, I missed it. And yeah, it's certainly possible that even though I missed that first good trade, that the second trade I took could have ended up being a big enough winner that I hit my daily goal on it, in which case, you know, all's well that ends well and I can keep trading and I've got that cushion. That just wasn't the case today. And that, that trade that I took, you know, was a little riskier, which is why I it most likely didn't become a big winner because I couldn't afford to just hold that whole position, you know, until I saw an exit indicator I knew I was getting in too high. So that's where, you know, it goes back to the very beginning of getting a good entry. Uh, I get it though. It's, you know, if you miss that good entry, it's frustrating. And uh, I think if there's a second opportunity and you could take it with small size, you know, whatever, uh, that's okay. But you just want to be careful that that second entry is, is still good quality and that you're not just lowering your quality threshold. You know, it's also certainly worth being aware of uh, the right stock versus the right setup on a day when the market is really hot uh, and we see a couple stocks that are showing some real strength. I'm willing to trade like less than perfect setups because I know I'm trading the right stock. But that gets into real nuance of being able to read market sentiment and being able to really get a feel for you know how hot or how cold it is. And as you probably saw today, momentum can flip on a dime. We saw a stock today go from like three bucks to, what was it, $13, $14? I mean, it's crazy. And we saw another one go from eight to 17, 18. I mean, we saw several impressive moves today. I hope that it's a sign of more to come. Maybe it is, I'm not sure yet. But, uh, but even if it's not a sign of more to come, and let's just say it's not. Let's just say today was like a fluke. We had you know, some really good opportunity. Then that makes it even more important that you don't dig yourself a hole on a day when things are moving, but you're not centered up here, you know, because you missed your first trade or whatever the case is, threw you off your center. Because then you're just going to be in that situation where the market's cold, you're not doing super well, and then you have a big red day because you got emotionally hijacked. That's not fun. So, you know, I have the max loss on my account right now. I have it set pretty tight. I'm not giving myself a lot of room. If I start to slip down, I'm just cutting it quick, I'm trying to really be dialed in. So those first couple trades, they really have to count for me. And unfortunately today, you know, yeah, I got green. I'm grateful for that, but I, I was not able to crush it the way I hope to. So I'm in this uh, position that you might be in as well of feeling like we had a big move and I missed it. 
There was a couple great trades, and I missed those two. I was a little timid. But I'll also tell you that it's very common that when it's been cold, those first couple stocks that start to move, you don't quite hit them quite right. Because you are timid, you know, it's been cold. You've gotten punched in the face a couple times, so you're a little nervous about sticking your head out. It's not gonna be until you start to see a little more consistency, both in the way stocks just perform, and then also, of course, in the way you trade them, that you'll start to gain the confidence to step up to the plate a little bit more. So, you know, after a couple of base hit days, you start to get, you know, your groove back a little bit. You start to think, okay, I, all right, I think I'm getting dialed in. So let yourself off the hook a little bit. If it's been a little choppy, it's been a little cold, and you missed a couple of, uh, uh, you know, possibly good opportunities, I'm, just, I'm sure that you're not alone on that. I'm 100% sure. So if that makes you feel better, then I, then I'm, you know, grateful for that. And I would just keep yourself focused on just trying to do a little bit better each day and trying to maintain that uh, positive kind of mental headspace because that's what it's about. When you get in your head, you take those really big losses and you get an emotional hijack. It's such a setback. It's a setback not just financially. In the loss of that moment, it costs you the opportunity for days, sometimes weeks, while you're having a slowly rebuild confidence. There's a lot of missed opportunity. So doing everything you can to keep yourself at kind of the top of your game mentally is important. And, and that's why that really is, I mean, that's why I've been sitting on the sidelines these last couple of weeks, because I'm just like, you know, yeah, on the sidelines you get a little rusty, you know, a little bit, but but you don't have the drawdown and the, the emotional hijack that can lead to real real loss of confidence. So that's it for me. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys for class tomorrow at 11. And uh, for those that have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to leave them down below. And I'll remind you, since we were talking about trading today and certainly some big movers, that my results are not typical. That trading is in fact risky. So there's no guarantee you're gonna find success. Whether you trade on your own, you learn from me. So take it slow, practice in a simulator. The market will be here for you and I'll see you in class tomorrow. All right, thanks for tuning in for this episode. Hope you subscribe to the channel. I'll see you soon.